Welcome again to Self Help Today. I'm Melissa Coakley, and with me is psychologist Rafael San Andreu. Welcome, Rafael. Um, Rafael is the author of the best selling book, Shake It Off. And you're here today to talk to us about being hyper demanding, something that you say causes depression, anxiety, obsessiveness, and stress. Mm -hmm. And you also are offering us an explanation of three ways that people's own irrational demands can make them crazy. Is that right? Yes. First, the, the first thing is to, to take into account that the people get frustrated, stressed, depressed because of demands, hyper demands. Okay. This is very important because we don't realize that we do that, but we do it. And all these um, super demanding super demands that we, we, we make, we, we can summarize them in three, in three types, in three kinds. The first is hyper demands to ourselves. And, and this is when we tell ourselves, I must do everything well all the time. Uh -huh. If not, I will be a disaster, a complete failure. We, we tell uh, those kind of things all the time. We don't realize. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, these, these demands can, can be directed to uh, the others. And we, we, can, we can say, everybody must treat me perfectly well all the time. If not, I cannot stand them. Mm -hmm. And, and the third is related to the world okay. and how it goes. No? And then is when we tell ourselves, everything must work perfectly well. If not, I cannot stand it. Like trains arrive on time, all the trains, the waiters treat me perfectly well all the time. And everything, everything has to be uh, as was intended. And this is very ir irrational as well, because this is not going to happen. <laughs> and That's second, true. and most important, you don't need it to be very happy. So what's your advice for good mental health? Should we be looking at things differently? Absolutely. We, we, it's much better to have a mind of preferences, mm -hmm. not hyper demanding, a hyper demanding mind. Okay. No. A mind of preferences. And that, and that would be like this. Uh, it would be telling, telling yourself, um, I would like to do many things fantastically well, but it won't be. I, w I, w I will do some things very well and some things I won't. And that's fine. And that's fine. Everybody is more or less the same and it's fine. I, I can be happy and I can do many good things in life, and it's, it's correct. The second is to have a mind of preference, preferences related to the others. Mm -hmm. And that would be telling yourself, the only thing I need is the people closer to me being nice to me. Mm -hmm. I don't need everybody to be nice all the time to me. No, some people, and not all the time, because they are human beings and they, they also fail. And it's not such a problem. It's not that bad. And the, and the third is related to the world. And I might say to, to myself, I would like everything to go very well or perfectly well, but it won't happen. Some trains will arrive on time. And some, some, some trains won't. And it's fine. It's fine. The, the world, the, the universe is imperfect. And it will always be. It will always be like this. And I accept it. Many people accept it and they are happy. We, um, we already have many opportunities and ways to be happy and good. So it's enough. So 
the, the key to, to mental health is to have a mind of preferences, preferences and not hyper demands. You talk about an exercise that I think is really interesting where you compare our irrational demands of today with the demands of our grandparents and the not so recent past. How do they compare? Uh, yes, if, if you compare the, the personal needs or, of our grandparents, you, you compare them to what we do with ourselves, you, you will realize that there is an incredible difference. In, in our parents' time, people didn't need so many things. Look, today, to be a decent person, you, 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 you think you need a lot of things. For instance, be in shape, be, have education, mm -hmm. be pretty smart, dressing smart, mm -hmm. uh, be an, an extrovert, have a very nice house, all, all those things our parents didn't need them. A great house, no. E education. Surely my, my grandfather didn't, couldn't write or, or read. And they, they, that was not a problem. So, um, um, we, we think we need a lot of things, uh, incredibly. Com it, it's, it's a time uh, of, of, on history, that we think we need more things to be a decent person. So th this is a, a huge problem because the, the people who are strongest and healthier, mentally healthier, mm -hmm. are the ones who need less, no, no, just the opposite. So in other words, we have no reason to complain? No, I don't think so. Because Melissa, complaining is always a, a mistake. Um, for instance, Stephen, Haw Stephen Hawking, the scientist in a wheelchair, he chose not to complain. And he could do it, but he chose not to do it. Mm -hmm. And he was thinking, always he was looking for opportunities to do valuable things. And that's it. Even, I, I remember that Stephen Hawking used to say, Complaining is it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. I won't do it. He, he said that to himself all the time. So, because when you complain, you are focusing only on the, on the things that you think you need, you lack, the problems, and, and, and you, you don't focus on your opportunities. Mm -hmm. And this is a, complaining is always a mistake. Why is it that we demand so much of ourselves? Why are we so hard on ourselves? Because the, the society compels us to, to, to do that. Because the modern society has a, a motto that says, the more, the better. The more, the better, all the time. And th this is a mistake, a huge mistake, because Nature doesn't work like this. Nature works with other concepts like equilibrium. Mm -hmm. For instance, how many ants are the correct number in a place, in a, in a province, in a, in a city? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a number. Okay. N not many more, not many less. Just that number, more or less. But this is a key equilibrium okay what, what nature looks for N not the the more the better as society says okay that's why uh, at the end of the day we end up thinking that we need to be smarter uh, richer more capable and, and and we demand so much uh, uh, th this is why this is because we copy what society tells Okay, so is this the opposite of a call to action? So are you condoning empathy or laziness? Are we in danger of becoming indifferent? No, not at all. Uh, no, because when you, uh, when you don't need many things, you don't demand crazily to yourself, 
you just relax and you you will want to do things mm -hmm. you will want to have adventures in life mm -hmm. but you don't you you won't put so much pressure onto yourself okay and that, that's the difference but of course you will want to do things look that uh, children that are happy they they want to explore a hill down there mm. of course they want to. sure but they are relaxed they want to do it for fun because they want to learn they want to discover but you don't put pressure on yourself this is the difference okay so you say that wealth and we live in a wealthy society you say that this is a double-edged sword that there are more options for better or for worse can you talk about that yes yes we, we live in, in, in a society now that has more, that offers more opportunities than ever. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you can work in something very, in, in many, you, you have many options of choosing a profession or the other. Mm -hmm. You can choose a partner among many, among thousands. Sure. And, and where to live, etc., uh -huh. etc. Et so many things. Sure. Compared to our grandparents, we have m many more opportunities, incredibly. Uh, and this is good on, on, on a side, but this is bad on the other. Uh, why is bad? Because as human beings tend to, to convert possibilities, or desires into absolute needs uh -huh. and obligations, we, we have this tendency. Sure. Uh, and at the end of the day, what happens is that we end up with a lot of obligations, demands, needs. Mm -hmm. So societies that are less wealthy than us, they, they have problems, they don't have so many opportunities, but they are much happier. So the, uh, you see that the, there is a, a trap down there. Uh -huh. is it, the opportunities can convert into uh, a problem. Mm -hmm. And what, what we can do is work on our philosophy and don't uh, stop this tendency to convert desires into obligation. So how can we put a stop to irrational demands in such a demanding world? Having a very good philosophy in the sense that it's fantastic to have all these opportunities, but don't convert them into needs. So it's the same than saying that what you need is a stop your needyitis. Mm -hmm. Do, don't need many things. For instance, you, you can tell yourself, I, I, I would like to become an actor in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will, I will study uh, to become an actor. Okay. Uh, I will uh, go to Los Angeles or whatever mm. and, and try to become an actor. Sure. I, if I don't get it, um, I would be happy anyhow because I don't need it. Mm. I like it. It's my desire, but I don't need it. Okay. So but you, you can make this uh, differentiation uh -huh. only with a very good philosophy. Okay. So we desire things, but we don't need them okay. crazily. Okay. So you just mentioned needyitis. Can you explain what that is? It's a very important concept. Nidiaitis is, is the belief that you need many, many things to be right, to be happy, to be decent. Mm -hmm. You need to be, to have a very nice house, a very nice profession, to be smart, to be handsome to have a lot of friends, to be an extrovert, and many things, mm -hmm. uh, millions of things. <laughs> and if you fail in, in only one of those things, you're a failure, 
a complete disaster. This is near the 80s. It's the worst thing you can do for yourself near the 80s. Why? Because if you need a lot of things, if you think you need a lot of things, um, you, 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 you're making yourself unhappy very easily. Why? Because if, if you don't get all those things, you feel bad. Mm -hmm. And if you get them, as well, you, you, you feel bad. Why? Because there is tension in your life. Because what about if you lose some of those things that you need so much? Then you, 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 uh, you feel stressed out because of this. So the best thing in life is to need very few things. Okay. The, the strongest and happiest people on earth need very little. In fact, the only thing they need is water and food. That's it. So, by the way, these are rational demands. You mentioned, Raphael, that there's an example of this in the ultra marathons that are becoming uh -huh. so popular these days. How so? Yes, because w when I was younger, when I was young, I would say, <laughs> uh, I, I remember that, that the marathon mm -hmm. was the, 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 the biggest race possible. And, and nowadays, it's not, it's nothing. People uh, run uh, 100, 200 kilometers mm -hmm. on the mountains. And, and then after this, they, they cycle and they swim and everybody does this and it's, it's crazy. Once I, I was invited to a Congress of rheumatologists in Spain. Mm -hmm. The, the National Congress of Rheumatologists uh -huh. in Spain. And at lunchtime, I, could, I had the opportunity to, have to, to speak with some of the best rheumatologists. Uh, at one point, we, we spoke about the, these ultra marathons. Right. And I remember that one, one of the rheumatologists told me, Raphael, Raphael lately, I, I receive many young people, 30 years old mm -hmm. or the like, with, for instance, with a very strong knee injury. Okay. And I, I tell them, well, you, you have to stop doing sport for the rest of your life. And they, they are very surprised. And of they, course. yes, and, and they tell me, but how you can tell me this, doctor? If I, I'm very healthy. Mm -hmm. I do ultramarathons. <laughs> I do a lot of sport. He told me that he, he, he then replies, that's why you, you, you are that bad, mm. because you do all this uh, excessive sport. Sure. And, but this is a perfect example of what happens nowadays, that our society uh, uh, demands so much on everybody. And we believe this. And then we are capable of making these crazy efforts sure. that are unhealthy. Okay, that's a good point. So what we're talking about here, what you discuss in your books and what you're explaining today is called cognitive psychology. Cognitive psychology is, is, the, is the kind of therapy that I practice. Uh -huh. It's based on the idea that the emotions we provoke our emotions through our thinking, mm -hmm. always, okay. through our thoughts. That if we have irrational, uh, an irrational thinking, we provoke ourselves irrational emotions, very strong negative emotions. And then we work on this, no? on having the best philosophy, uh, philosophy, um, and the best inner dialogue. When, when you, you don't demand crazy things, you feel great. Mm -hmm.